a woman tells the true story of what happened to her when she stayed in room 217 at the Stanley Hotel, the very hotel written about in Stephen King's book The Shining, the very room Stephen King stayed in. Do you believe in the power of prayer for physical healing? One man was so desperate he spoke to God. His story is incredible, uplifting, inspiring, and just a bit scary. Now sit back, turn down the lights, and come with me into the weird darkness. This took place around 2003. I was living in a row home with my then first wife. The house was hers and I was doing some work in the backyard. The row home was actually one building with three homes. Ours was the middle one, so we had a neighbor's yard on each side of our own. At the back of the yards was a very narrow alleyway that T-boned into another alley. That alley bordered the yard to the right of ours, if you were looking at our back door. I was standing in the middle of the yard facing the neighbor's yard that bordered the second alley with the narrow alley to my left. I casually looked to my left slightly, as I had a feeling I was being watched from across the way, but saw no one. I looked and looked and saw nothing but a large oak tree in someone's unkempt yard with no one standing under or around it. But still, the feeling I was being watched from that location was strong, very strong. I started to turn my head back to the right, and that's when I saw something, something I couldn't believe. There, in the corner of my sight, I witnessed a tall, humanoid shape towering over me, standing right next to me on my right side. I'm 5 foot 10 inches and this being was at least 4 feet above me. It was solid but made of light. I couldn't see through it but I couldn't make out any clear definitions about it other than a humanoid shape, a distinctive jawline and its head was turned looking over me and staring in the same direction I felt something was watching me. This being of light had two arms. I saw them come together in front of it and its hands were grasping a handle to a sword. The sword was as high as its waistline and the tip must have been resting on the ground. I then looked back to my left to see if I could now see what the being of light was looking at, but still there was nothing. Quickly I turned back to my right, but the being of light was gone, and so was the feeling I was being watched. I believe that day I saw my guardian angel. I feel privileged I was able to see it and witness it looking out for me. It must have been sent to chase whatever that thing was away, to do battle in the heavenly realms. I told my wife at the time, and she felt the same way that it must have been my guardian angel. All I know is it was at least 10 feet tall built like it could take on an army and armed with a battle sword. It was made of light but solid and it stood by my side with a look that could and most likely did chase off the devil himself. I like trains and riding by train so, when an opportunity to go to Frankfurt for business presented itself, I opted to take the sleeper service in both directions rather than fly. I was looking forward to the trip, and as I found my private sleeper compartment at Vienna Station, I will admit to a little excitement. I had decided to try to get some sleep. Almost immediately, the train left Vienna as arrival was at 5.25 a.m., meaning I would need to wake up about an hour earlier. I pushed the three seats away and pulled down the bed, and after ordering breakfast, I got into bed and switched off the light. For a while, I just lay there, allowing myself to be gently rocked to sleep by the motion of the train. At some point, I recall feeling as if someone was sitting on my legs. 
and as I tried to get up to see, I realized that I could not. I could not move. I could hear the people next door talking and the sound of the train on the tracks and something getting up off my legs and moving above me. There was a feeling of rising terror, especially when I saw the thing that now floated above me. It was like a whitish mist with eyes and a face of sorts. It came alongside me and peered at me. I tried to scream for help. Nothing came out. I was totally aware of everything. Sounds, smells, sight, my fear, everything. But I was paralyzed. And the plaything of whatever this was that was now inspecting me like a cold piece of meat. Then, as quickly as it had started, the train suddenly braked and the jolt freed me. I watched as the mist rose up and into the luggage recess of the carriage where it seemed to be waiting. I sat up and switched on the light. It was still there. I was frightened and my heart was racing. I was also puzzled. What had just happened? Had it been a vivid dream? I soon came to the conclusion it was an old hag experience or sleep paralysis and that hadn't happened to me in decades. Despite that, the thing, the entity, was real. I could still see it. When you write ghost stories for a hobby, it takes something very scary to frighten you. I can tell you that I felt a mixture of fear and puzzlement. I started to pray and then also do some self-protection. The thing seemed to have gone and I commanded it not to bother me again. After a few minutes, I lay down again and dozed. I awoke, knowing the thing was back. Once again, I could not move nor scream, yet I could see, hear, and sense everything. The thing was hovering over me and, I'll be honest here, I felt a sense of sexual excitement along with the fear. The thing was going to molest me? For a few moments it seemed so, but then it seemed to know that I was aware of it and its intentions and instead it moved upwards and peered at me again. I started to scream, help, help me, but no sound emerged from my lips. I was now really scared because I was at the mercy of this thing and we both knew it and there was not a thing I could do. Imagine laying paralyzed as an entity, perhaps even a succubus, eyed you up as its next victim. I continued to struggle, though I could not move. I kept on trying to scream for help. I knew there was a call button just above my head, if only I could move. The malevolence of the thing was scaring me and I knew it was just a matter of time before it started doing whatever it planned on doing. And then again, I was fully awake and able to move. I sat up, sweating profusely with my heart pounding. I again prayed, engaged in some self-protection and generally told it to get the hell away from me. Needless to say, I barely rested the remainder of the night, and my day was one of a heavy tiredness, dogged by the memory of the grayish, mist-like face. Up next, a true story from the very hotel that The Shining was based upon, plus a man prays to God for deliverance from physical pain, and what happens to him is both encouraging and disturbing. This episode of Weird Darkness is brought to you by the audiobook Your Haunted Lives – True Tales of the Paranormal by G. Michael Vasey, narrated by Darren Marlar from Marlar House. Your Haunted Lives is a collection of creepy, often downright chilling, true experiences of the paranormal submitted by visitors to the My Haunted Life 2 website. The tales have been carefully selected and edited and range from apparitions to hauntings to demons through to the downright bizarre. This terrific collection of true stories of the paranormal will keep you looking over your shoulder. Your Haunted Lives – A Collection of True Ghost Stories Hear a free sample and support Marlar House by downloading the audiobook for yourself at WeirdDarkness.com.
while staying the night in room 217 at the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado, my partner and I experienced three strange events we will probably remember for the rest of our lives. When you hear about the Stanley Hotel, you probably think of Stephen King's horror novel called The Shining, or Stanley Kubrick's horror film also called The Shining. However, in addition to a famous book and film, the hotel also has had a reputation for decades of reported ghost activity. Claims of paranormal activity have attracted visitors from around the world. In 1974, famous horror writer Stephen King stayed the night in room 217. Interestingly, his stay at the Stanley had inspired him to write his famous horror novel The Shining. It is also the room where many guests report unexplained events believed to be caused by the spirit of a former Stanley Hotel housekeeper named Elizabeth Wilson. She passed away in the 1950s. My Story Now I will share the three separate paranormal experiences that have changed my belief in ghosts. Despite being a former skeptic, I came to the Stanley with an open mind. While I've seen orbs and have had several strange experiences that I can't explain, what I experienced on Friday, May 26, 2017 was certainly the most intense and frightening experience of them all. Experience number one, a trolley by the door. At approximately 8 p.m., my partner and I came back from a quick trip to the grocery store. Out of nowhere, we heard the sounds of what seemed to be a trolley that was outside of our door. My partner immediately walked over to the door to see who it was. I thought to myself that perhaps it was room service, but I knew we didn't make any requests. Shockingly, my partner looked through the peephole and there was no one in sight. Although what happened was certainly a shock to us, it wasn't enough to convince me that it was a ghost. At around 11 p.m., we decided to reach out to Miss Elizabeth Wilson, or any other ghost that may have been hanging out in our room. I figured that even if nothing were to come of it, I can at least say I tried. I said to Miss Wilson, if you are really here with us, prove it. I repeated this a couple of times. This was the last thing I had said before I finally went to bed. Experience number two, a big bang that woke up other visitors. It was around 2.30 in the morning when I was awoken with a loud noise. Despite my partner being a heavy sleeper, the noise was loud enough to wake him up as well. The loud noise sounded like it came from someone who picked up a large and heavy object and then slammed it onto the floor. Interestingly, it wasn't just my partner and I who woke up from this mysterious noise. Just a moment or two after we woke up, we heard other guests around the hotel speaking and whispering. I was so scared, I asked my partner to put the television on so I could just forget about it and go back to sleep. However, he didn't want the television on. He was more interested in finding out where the noise came from than going back to sleep. A strange discovery the next morning. When I woke up the next morning, I saw a 20-ounce bottle of Mountain Dew on the floor. My partner's soda somehow fell to the floor in the middle of a quiet night. What's even more odd is that this bottle was loud enough to wake up not just my partner and I, but also other guests who were near our room. I don't believe it was the soda that caused the loud noise. I believe it was a ghost responding to our request to prove it really exists. Other guests who say they heard a loud bang. Before we left room 217, I overheard a conversation between several people outside of our room. They were talking about hearing a loud noise late in the night. I spoke with a woman who told us she was staying in a room directly above ours. After I asked her about the loud noise, she said it woke her up around 2.30. The woman described the noise as the fall of a large barrel. According to the woman, there was another guest in room 324 who also heard the noise. While on our way to checkout, we ran into a young man who stayed in room 326 with his father. 
In addition to taking pictures of orbs that were floating outside of Room 217 the previous night, he too said he was woken up from what he described as a loud boom. Experience number three – The Creepy Laugh of a Woman While I thought that the extremely loud and unexplained bang was enough to convince me that there really are ghosts roaming the earth, one more thing happened that night. At around 4 a.m. I woke up and realized that less than two hours after the loud bang occurred, it was completely silent in our room. My partner was sound asleep. Just a minute or two after I woke up, out of nowhere, I heard the sounds of a chuckle from a woman. Interestingly, it sounded like the ghost was giggling just centimeters from my ears. I believe that the chuckle had probably come from Elizabeth Wilson. Although it certainly was frightening and quite creepy to me, I was extremely tired. I quickly went back to sleep. After staying just one night in the Stanley's Room 217, I went from a skeptic to a believer in ghosts. If I ever go back to this hotel, I will likely request another room with many reports of supernatural activity. However, regardless of what room you visit at the Stanley Hotel, if you come with an open mind, you just might have a paranormal experience you will never forget. I'd broken up with a girlfriend, and shortly after the breakup I developed a kink in my neck on the left side. It stayed with me for months and months, almost close to a year. One day I couldn't take it anymore. In submission, I got down first on my knees and started praying to God to heal my neck, to take this pain, this 